I think with, uh, with respect to former President Trump, um, there's, it, there's some question about whether or not uh, it's a bullet or shrapnel that, you know, that hit his ear. So it's, it's conceivable, although as I say here right now, I don't know whether that bullet, in addition to you know, causing the grazing, could have also landed somewhere else. Um, but I believe we've accounted for all of the shots and the cartridges. So let us. So, Senator, my question for, for that again is, and, and again, you see this photo here of the, the bullet whizzing by uh, the president right there by his by his ear where, again, he was injured. Uh, but uh, this even though this investigation is ongoing and that's that's the answer you get a lot of these times when you're in these committees. Um, but even working in local news for 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 more than a decade, we were able to get more details than this uh, two weeks after damage is done. Do you think enough information is being released to the public um, in such a, a high-profile event such as this? Are you, are you upset at the fact that we haven't heard more? You know, I'm, I'm upset. This is why conspiracy theories occur is because it looks like they're trying to cover up something. Look, Dr. Ronnie Jackson issued a letter, the former president's uh, doc, uh, doctor, now member of Congress, saying there was a two centimeter laceration uh, from this particular, particular bullet. I think we could even just go back to the motive. Why don't they release the full motive? They're making this way too complicated. This is a, a, a Lee Harvey Oswald copycat uh, situation. This young man had a significant depressive disorder. I'm going to bet he's schizophrenic. I think he has hallucinations. When he was 15, he was denied membership to the rifle team on high school. He was denied membership. This kid has been bullied his whole life, so he spends the next four or five years of his life learning how to shoot a rifle, and he wants to make history. He's seeking attention. This is absolutely a copycat crime. Quit making it so complicated. Again, the focus should be going back in there, turning the Secret Service up upside down, a crisis intervention team. That should have already happened. If we had a real commander in chief that had two, half of a common sense, he would have already done that. That's why we need a change in the White House come November. Yeah. Um, great point. We're all looking for answers here, and hopefully this is wrapped up sooner rather than later. We know how quickly the news cycle moves, uh, but an assassination attempt on a former president is such a serious topic that has to be examined. Uh, while we have you, Senator, I want to pivot to what happened in Washington yesterday, where the Prime Minister of Israel spoke to members of Congress. There were several lawmakers who chose not to attend. Also, what was happening outside of the address, just chaos on Capitol Hill, where anti-Israel pro-Hamas protesters were gathering and burning American flags. Uh, wanted to get your reaction to not only what was happening in the room, but also outside in our nation's capital. Yeah. Well, this is what happens again when you have a weak commander in chief that that October 7th would have never happened if Donald Trump had been in office. Uh, Vice President Harris uh, absence was uh, speaking volumes that she doesn't care about Israel, that she's not pro Israel. She's the pro Hamas party. But I want to just uh, give take my hat off to Prime Minister Netanyahu and the great job that he did explaining why there is this special relationship between Israel and America that that we that they have helped intervene so many times prevent massive terrorist attacks occurring in this country, that we, that we share military technology as well, and then why this is important to Americans, that we're not fighting, uh, Israel's just fighting against Hamas. Hamas is the enemy of America as well. Hamas would, would much rather attack America than they would Israel. So remember, Hamas chants death to America, death to Israel. So I thought the prime minister did a great job just sharing that, sharing that message, why we have this important relationship and why why it's important, even to folks back home, home in Kansas. As, as for the people that are riding out here, look, the, the number of people here was half of what they predicted. Most of them are paid. They're organized. Uh, it's, it's a disgrace. That's all I can say. And that's who Kamala Harris supports. She supports these people that are burning the flag of America, the people that chant death to America. Don't have that's the, Kamala Harris. You have another way to look at it when she does not, again, attend as she presides over the Senate. She doesn't attend uh, the joint session of Congress uh, the address by the Prime Minister of Israel, though she will meet with him later today. So will President Biden. They will do so separately again this afternoon. Uh, Senator Roger Marshall of Kansas, Kansas, thank you so much. Good to see you, sir.